I would like to use this platform. I should probably check we're on. TV 18, are you ready to go? Thank you. I would like to use this platform for a moment before we begin our meeting. Our community is hurting for a variety of reasons. We have no idea what goes on within each other's families. We do not know what goes on in people's minds and in their hearts. I would like to just stress tonight to each and every one of you that is here to please use kindness. We can have differences, we can discuss, and we can disagree. But most importantly, please be kind to one another as you have no idea what a difference a small gesture of kindness can make to someone. In front of you, you have an agenda. Before I ask for a motion to accept, I would like to make a change in, I don't have my agenda. Yeah, you can have this one. Thank you. To move um, from our student report, if I could move um, our student report to the first item before public comment. May I have a motion to accept? So move. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. I think we just, oh, did. just did. Yeah, Sorry we just did. That. That's okay. Okay, so um, we wanted to recognize you, Natalie Mack, because you have been our student representative all year long, and we are so appreciative for all the work you've done. Your questions have always been very, very poignant, um, important, good. Uh, you've been a great voice for the students. And um, we are so excited to see you moving on to um, reach your dreams in um, music and music education and all of that. So we just wanted to take a minute to thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, thank you guys. It's been such an honor to be a part of this. And just like I knew what went on behind the scenes a little bit, but just being a part of this, I really see how much everyone in this room does for all the kids, and it's really inspiring. So thank you, guys. Thank you. We'll miss you, you Natalie. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I do have to run. <laughs> can we have a name tag so that she can take it to? It is in her flowers. Oh, it's in your flowers. Oh, good. <laughs> Turn your flowers. Your oh, name tag is. is part of that. Thanks. Sorry, I have to run. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, it's thank right. you. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Natalie. So uh, we'll move to um, public comment. Um, just to, I, as we've got a lovely um, audience today, I just want to make a couple of additional points for public comment. Individuals may address topics on the agenda or, itemize, or items that are specified uh, for public comment or items within the scope of the responsibility of the school committee. Each comment is for three minutes. It is a comment. Unfortunately, this is not designed to be a conversation or a dialogue back and forth. So um, it is for you to come up, make a comment. Um, three minutes. As we know, we were expecting a large group. We are limited to 20 minutes for um, public comment. So. That gives us six and a half people, but I'm not going to stretch anybody, so I would say we'll take seven people if they choose to do the full three minutes. I'd ask you um, to come up to the podium and just state your name before you begin your comment. So at this point, I'd like to open public comment and ask somebody to be recognized. Please come up. <clears throat> My name's Jess Douglas. I am a nurse. Um, I've been a nurse for 27 years, um, and I have taught at the high school for five years altogether, four altogether, I think, because I took a break and came back. Um, I just want to say teaching is harder, and I'm speaking to, like, the issue, what I'm addressing with you would be, like, staffing and re recruitment retention, all that. But, I mean, I have titrated cardizem drips for a new rapid onset AFib to keep somebody's systolic over 90. I've dealt with postpartum hemorrhages with stillborns. Teaching is harder. 
we, since I've walked in both, trying to educate 20 to 30 kids, all with different learning styles, and then add in some, into some IEPs and trying to keep everybody engaged, meet all of their needs, it is so much harder than nursing. So I just want you to support Nantucket teachers and give them what they deserve. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Any other comment? Oh, hi, come on down. Good evening, everyone. My name is Paige Martineau. I've been an English teacher at Nantucket High School for 20 years. I'm also the president of the Nantucket Teachers Association. And I am here tonight to ask you all to truly think about how much our te teachers are worth. In March of 2020, when COVID hit, we were negotiating our last three-year contract, the one that ends this school year. We had no idea how COVID might affect the economy and our ability to operate in the coming years. So the teachers agreed to make sacrifices in order for the school to continue to operate without the need of laying anyone off. We took a 1% the first year, a 1.25 the second, and a 1.25 the third, just as many other town unions did. And then we rolled up our sleeves and completely pivoted our teaching to fully virtual that spring and hybrid for the rest of the next year. I know you've heard what it was like for students, but I'm not sure you really know what it was like for teachers, schools, and then hours again in figuring out how to apply them to our practice, and then hours again in, in creating playlists so students and parents had access to what we created. The wonderful part of teaching is the interplay between teacher and student, and among the students themselves. No matter how hard we tried to maintain those connections, the screen was not a good replacement, and it was just as tough on us as it was on the students to lose those connections. Our relationships with our students are what make our jobs so wonderful and fulfilling. And we've settled back into the regular normal routines of school, but we've had to contend with a whole host of new challenges, which you've heard all about. I think we all know the detrimental effects it had on education and the mental health of our kids. It's also had an immense effect on our teachers. And those of us who are still here and give our bodies and souls during the past three years to our students and our classrooms, often to the detriment of our families at home, believe we deserve to be paid well in return. Our brothers and sisters in the police department received a 555 and a $10,000 market adjustment. What are our teachers worth? We've lost so many staff members over the past three years to other jobs. We've limped through this year without a full staff, and it's incredibly likely that we'll be doing the same next year. Our new teachers are living in single rooms, damp basements, and apartments with multiple roommates, all of which cost them an exorbitant amount, often leaving very little at the end of the month for expenses. I don't have to tell you that the human infrastructure of the school system is essential to the operation of our island society. Without a functioning school, families will leave in droves. Many already are. What are our teachers worth? The school committee are the ones who vote on our contract. I ask you one last time, what do you believe our teachers are worth? Please give us what we deserve. Let's move forward together. Hi, good evening, Brent Tartamella. Um, I have a freshman here. I was not planning to say anything, and uh, I think Paige really summed everything up. But I think we are, I don't think, I know we are in a mental health crisis here on the island. Um, and I don't probably need to say more about that right now. But our teachers are where our kids are every day, and they're the constant in their lives. And we need to provide our teachers 
with the opportunity to have the stability that they need. And with 20 open positions and it only going to get worse, we really need to right the ship. And um, we always talk about, or the, the town talks about, not the school committee, the town talks about how they're so proud of having the, having the lowest tax rate. I think it's really time that we need to take care of our teachers. We have a world-class island. We should have a world-class school. And I appreciate you keeping your teachers at the, uh, at the priority. Thank you. Is there any other person that would like to make a comment? Yes. Hi, everyone. Meg Browers. Thanks for having me. Um, as a parent and a community member, I'm deeply concerned about the state of our education system here on the island, which is only further stressed by the ongoing teacher contract negotiations and the fear that we cannot find a way to agree upon a living wage. The time is now for action. We need genuine effort and determination from our town leadership to provide the school's funding for appropriate wage increases for the teachers in order to address the huge is issues of stability plaguing our district. Families and individuals who make Nantucket what it is, the fabric of our community, is eroding fast, and we cannot continue to allow this to happen in the schools. We are facing a housing crisis, a teacher shortage, one of the highest teacher turnover rates in the state, continued vacancies at all levels, and we are not attracting or retaining the teachers the way we need to in order to serve our children's, children and families best. None of this is good for Nantucket, our future, or our present. Our teachers are stretched too thin between lack of proper staffing and support post-COVID challenges and behavioral issues district-wide. From a parent's perspective, it is non-negotiable that during this round of contract negotiations, we offer our teachers reasonable living wages in line with the high cost of living on Nantucket so our teachers are able to afford to live on the island, raise families here, and be a part of our community. They deserve our support and recognition for their continued hard work and dedication to our children and the essential profession of teaching. I urge you as our school committee reps for all of our students and families to take action on this issue and work towards a swift resolution, to work strategically and creatively with town leaders to fairly compensate teachers with this contract for the benefit of our, our entire community now and in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Any other person for public comment? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay, moving on to superintendent's report. Yes. So um, I'm giving a little bit of a, um, of a recap of the end of year report as we have seen it um, with regard to graduation and some celebrations and, and uh, um, movement of um, uh, promotion ceremonies. Graduation happened on Friday, June 16th after a, some concern about the weather. And um, I will be completely honest, I thought it was a great um, movement to change to Friday evening. Um, it was certainly cooler than we've had in the past with the graduations happening in the middle of the day. Um, the weather held, and um, I'd say overall it was a great success. We had 143 graduates, um, a wonderful um, uh, speaker uh, who came to us from New York City and really um, inspired our students, which was, which was great. And then the next day was a parade. So it was, uh, I would say, overall a great success around graduation. Um, eighth grade graduation will be coming up on Friday, uh, eighth, eighth grade promotion. Um, Pre-K and K ceremonies have happened last week and um, moving forward. And um, the only other graduation I would certainly love to, to remind people of is that um, we have um, some retirements um, and we want to um, celebrate them on Thursday. Uh, at 2.30 uh, in CPS for an ice cream social. So we would love to see you all there uh, to, and, and the committee as well to um, celebrate our retirees who are going to happening then. Um, we are, our hiring update is um, we've, we've made some incremental moves. We are interviewing currently, still reaching out to, uh, to potential um, 
hires, it is challenging across the state. This is not just an, a Nantucket issue. We are seeing this in, on the Cape. There are people who are struggling, um, different districts are struggling to hire everywhere. We currently have 21 po teaching positions open, um, but many of those are getting filled daily. I'm receiving uh, recommendations for hire every day. So this number 21 may be lower by um, the end of the week, hopefully. Uh, and it's certainly a challenge that we are seeing, but we are not the only ones to be seeing this. Um, the, uh, at, at the administrative level, we still have one administrator, I should say two administrator positions open. That is the Director of Curriculum for Humanities, and we also have the Facilities and Grounds position, which is open, but we are interviewing for both, and it is our hope that we will see um, good, co uh, good candidates come through and we'll be able to hire very soon. Um, I want to share with you the proposed uh, school committee dates for next year. So if you please turn to the third page, you will see the list of dates that we have. Um, our next meeting um, on July 18th, our, it will be a full meeting, and then we will do a, um, although it's not on this meeting uh, list, uh, you'll see it in the horizon. We will consider a retreat, a school committee retreat mm -hmm. at the end of July. And then um, these are the dates, so if you want to look briefly to see what this is, um, what dates there are, but we've pretty much followed the same pattern, which is first and third Tuesday of the month. We made an adjustment last year and we will make, and we made an, and we will make another one this year around um, the Martin Luther King holiday because um, that falls on the first Monday and the, uh, excuse me, the first Tuesday and the third Tuesday fall right after holidays. So we have um, the first tu Tuesday, which comes right after the New Year's holiday and the second Tuesday, third Tuesday, which falls on after Martin Luther King. So rather than have our school committee meetings um, back up to a holiday Monday, we will shift those. All the rest are here, so um, we hope that you have um, no questions about that. And um, I don't have any additional updates for today. So. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Ms. Moralder? No questions. Well, no questions. Tim? Thank you. Oh. Okay. I have one just sure. comment. The, you know, the ice cream social is Thursday. We typically used to hold that the last day of school, but is there a reason why you've you've moved it to Thursday? We have done that in the past, or just recently. We, mm -hmm. we moved it to um, an afternoon simply because um, some folks are ready to head out the door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, we decided that we would do it on the Thursday before rather than Friday to give them so the opportunity. Have more yes, we hope to have more attendance, yes. Great. Exactly. Thank so. you. All right. That's it. Sure. Thank you. All right, I'd like to um, move on to presentations and discussions. Uh, Kim Pignato and Dr. Mandy Bardsley, you are here um, to talk about and give us an update on the mentoring program. I'm going to step in for Mandy. Oh, are you? She's okay. Not here today, so. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi there. My name is Kim Pignato, and for you, if you don't know me, I work at Nantucket Intermediate School. I'm a grade four teacher, and I've been in this district for over 20 years. So this year, um, not only was I a classroom teacher, but I was the mentor coordinator. And so Mandy Bardsley is not here today, but I'm just representing a summary of what has happened this year. So there were just three things on our agenda today, and it was just about who our mentees were, the amount of mentees that we had. We gave a survey, and then we also had a meeting for recommendations. So this year in particular, as we know about the housing crisis and the turnover, we had 40% of our teachers that did not have professional te teaching status this year. We also had 46 teachers that, or that were related service providers that were actually new to NPS this, come, this year. And then when we looked at kind of our pie chart, there was over 56% that was on an emergency or provisional license for this coming school, or this particular school year. So at the end of the year, we handed a survey out to our new mentees <coughs> as well as their mentors and we summarized the data that was collected. So overall, when we asked about the mentor program, um, they said that 80% of the mentees felt like the mentoring program helped them develop as an educator. 
And when we looked at how we did a match between mentees and mentors, this was the mentee's perspective. About 85% of them thought that they were well matched with the mentors that they had. When we looked at the time commitment, um, it kind of mirrored each other, but a typical time commitment was anywhere between one to two hours per week that they spent with their mentors. And then when we looked at the type of interactions that they that they had, most of them, um, majority was individual face-to-face -face meeting or group meetings. Um, also any kind of meetings after school or through observations. And then this was the piece that we um, talked a little bit more about was the observations. It is part of the mentoring program that you get to observe each other. And that we had talked about there was a little bit of a difference between the mentee's perspective and when we talked to some of the mentors, they they kind of thought that coming in and out and giving assistance was also an observation, so that this was the only piece where they didn't kind of mirror each other. But we do know that um, one of the big pieces is being able to give time for new hires, mentees, to be able to observe their mentors or anyone else. And then when we surveyed the topics that they discussed during, during their time, 82% um, said it was planning units or lessons, working with parents or families, our supervision and evaluation program, any assessments or classroom <coughs> management were some of our higher ranges. And then when we looked at the mentors and they had their own survey, we asked if they thought that they were adequately prepared to be an effective mentor, and about 75% said yes. So we also gave some um, open response type sentences so that they could also fill in. So some of the successes from our mentors, this was given to our, from our mentees perspective, was that they had a point person to be able to go to, to have someone to help navigate or ask questions to, that they had as um, new hires for some of them, a sense of belonging, being able to meet um, new people, forming friendships, and being able to talk to someone about their experiences. Um, also being able to learn more about the, dis the district and collaboration. And then we also asked about the challenges. And so one of the biggest pieces was time, being able to meet. Um, some schedules did not match up. And they were hoping for more time at the beginning of our school year to meet. And having structured time instead of some of our whole group presentations. And part of our new teacher class is that there is after school presentations um, not sure how many hours, but throughout the year, and that they thought that they would be better suited with their mentors at that time. Um, some of them thought that some of the matching, even though 85% matched, there were some that just because of their position could not be matched with someone at their building or someone in their department, and even sometimes subject matter, depending on the new hires and the mentors available. <coughs> so what we looked at for the challenges was a need to differentiate being able to help um, new teachers versus any kind of related service providers being able to just differentiate between having a new educator and just someone who's new to the district but not teaching being able to offer different levels of pd depending on their experience and then um, something that was similar was a need for to have a separate program so basically some people thought that if they were new to Nantucket but not new to teaching that some of it was repetitive and not needed for them so some of the suggestions was mentor training um, this past year we actually did um, a virtual there was just a, a class that they could take online we thought it would be easier for being able to do it on your own time. However, it was longer than anticipated and much more hours than anticipated. Mm -hmm. And so they did enjoy maybe having something back in person and also being able to collaborate with those people instead of taking something online and solo. Also some structure and responsibility, um, making it more clear on what would fall under a mentor's job so that they met all those requirements, and then perhaps having a checkpoint each term or semester to assess and decide if everything's been going well or if there needed to be some tweaks. So they also talked about um, being able to suggest for needing for training some of the, the mentees thought that they needed more of was some of our district-specific tasks, 
um, the ins and outs of the district, especially if you're new to Nantucket, not knowing just those little pieces um, about where to put your absences and even just like the gene day is what they had kind of <laughs> said. So just kind of knowing the ins and outs when you're new. Mm -hmm. And then um, technology in particular, just having more time for them at the beginning to learn Aspen, Schoology, or Teach Point, being able to um, have early group meetings instead of waiting until um, October or November. Also, any content and subject specific report that um, support that they needed, or if special services for more for professional development on special ed. And then the last that they had asked is classroom management. So then um, this past Monday, about a week ago, we met as a steering committee, and our committee was um, at administrators, mentors for this year, um, mentees for this year, and myself and uh, Mandy Barkley was actually on virtually. And we met for about two hours. And what we came off of from that, from that meeting, which we looked at the survey, we looked at some information, and we gave our opinions on what we have known was that, that we needed to better distribute a leadership for our mentors to see how they can help as well. We know that there needs to be some differentiation between primary schools and secondary schools because what we have done in the past is put everyone in one room, which doesn't seem to meet the needs for everyone at that time. Um, and then we also talked a little bit more about how to support our teachers that are in year two and year three that are still not a professional teaching status but still require some assistance and how we can provide more assistance for them as they are reaching their professional teaching status, hopefully here in Nantucket. We also talked about how to better train the new mentors because the online didn't quite work but that we have to go back to giving training here in Nantucket. Some of the re recommendations that we came out of that meeting for was year one, was be able to continue to match a mentor for one-to-one -one support, to develop a, a universal tool that will support mentors and mentees with observing each other's. So one of the pieces that came up was just that once they're able to do an observation, if there was kind of an assessment piece that they could fill out and reflect on what they saw and what they could do or what they wanted to take from that observation. And then being able to give them in-house um, professional development like responsive classroom and skill for teaching but make sure that it goes throughout the schools um, years two and new th years two and three which is actually new we haven't done anything with this yet but to be able to offer some sm small groups for teachers to discuss problems of practice and to give them some sort of assistance throughout those two years because they are required to have so many hours with um, professional status teachers and then a new teacher assessment. So at the beginning of the year, having um, these new teachers, these mentees being able to fill out a survey of what they would need the most for when looking for professional development, when they're looking for assistance with their mentor or with the mentoring program. And then also we talked about a kind of a more of a choice board of offering. So what we have done in the past is we have after school classes that sometimes mentees come alone and sometimes they come with their mentor. However, what happens is, is that everyone sits through the same presentations and it's not necessarily providing anything for sometimes half of them. They might have got it at their own school, they could have already heard it before, it might be not new to them. And so kind of being able to offer them more choices so that they can get more out of what they need. And also it actually, actually maybe having the mentors help with those pieces. So being able to get the support that they need instead of having to sit through, because we all know that time is something that we don't have enough of and we want to make sure that they're using it wisely. We also talked about the mentor training to try to bring it back to in person instead of um, having it back virtual, being able to have op observing times for mentees and being able to have some sort of um, problems and practice protocols for years two and three. We talked about being able to meet quarterly as a mentoring team to discuss any problems or practice and to make sure that we are reviewing the expectations and if we're meeting them or not. I think that was the last slide. If you have any questions for me or Dr. Hallett. Tim. How many times do the mentor and the mentee, are they supposed to meet, can they meet? Is there a required they're required, they're required to, they have 40 hours the first year for year one that they're required to meet. Um, observations, we usually try to have them observe each other once or twice. That can be tricky sometimes as well because 
we are looking for coverage for teachers to come in and out but they are required to fill out a law a log for 40 hours for that particular year um, I think this year we probably had five or six classes that would go from three to five it would be a two-hour class we started once a uh, once a month sometimes mentors are required to go and sometimes it's strictly for the mentees Ms. Meralda? Um, is this program offered to all educators and administrators? Or? I can yeah, go sure. ahead. So this is a program, um, I'll yell, <laughs> hopefully they'll hear me. Um, this is a program that is specific to teachers, teachers. But, um, but educators who are um, administrators have to go through the same mentoring uh, number of hours with a uh, ment mentor. Um, same number of hours with a log, et cetera. So there's, there is, uh, and it's a two-year induction as opposed to a three-year for ad administrators. But it is important, and we uh, uh, look at it in very much the same way. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Laura? Thank you. So it's currently a one-on-one -on -one match, so it's a mentor with a mentee. We've had some this year and in past years have uh, one what, two mentees for one mentor, mm -hmm. depending on their subject or their content and depending on if it can work out. Mm -hmm. And what is the motivation to be a, a mentor? I mean, obviously, you know, to give back, but is it's a stipend position, I would imagine? It's a stipend position. Mm -hmm. And then uh, is there a requirement at all if you have so many years of service that you are You would asked? hope that they would have professional teaching status and they do have to take this um this mentor, pro mentor program, some sort of class that's offered. Mm -hmm. They do have to have that in order to be a, a mentor. Great, and then um, it looks like, so year two and three is a new initiative. That is not, there's not currently a mentor program. Year two yeah. and year three, they're required to take, um, have 50 hours with other teachers with pro professional teaching status and they have to send that to the state. Mm -hmm. um, but as of any classes or anything like that, that's not required. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I'm impressed by the well, the program, but really for the for the, the survey results, because often when you put out surveys, you don't get a lot back. You don't get a lot of feedback. But I was so thrilled to go through and read all of this, and because one of my first questions when a, a mentor, you know, the percentage of mentors that said they didn't feel like they had everything um, to equip them, my immediate question was, well, what did you need or why do you feel that? And mm -hmm. you followed right up. Did you make the um, survey? Did you put the survey we had, together? We already had a survey put together and then Mandy Bardsley went in and just kind of edited it a little, revised it. So was most of it multiple choice or was a lot of open answers? I mean, Some open of it was response. multiple choice and then there were a few that were kind of um, short sentences, open response. It's great that you got such feedback, I think very thorough. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Walk. Thank you. If I may, through the chair, I don't know, Kim, if you want to mention any. Um, there is there has been some talk at the state level as well. Um, the Department of Education has put out some um, some new parameters around mentoring. I know that the mentoring the steering committee went through some of that. Is there anything that you could, that came out of that that you wanted to share? With you? Um, yeah, we just noticed the state is coming up with something that's not quite public yet. But Mandy had a chance to take this course online or take this. Um, workshop and so she was able to bring the information back to us and just um, a lot of talk about year two year three a lot of talk about differentiating between your schools from primary versus secondary mm -hmm. and um, just being able to focus on all parts like the observations were a really big piece of it as well and making sure that it's differentiated mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I noticed on um, whether it was social, taking a walk, or doing something outside of the, the school grounds. We've talked as a school committee about how can we support our new teachers or new staff coming in um, to welcome them to the community. And, and I love the layout of everything that you give details for the school, but do you think there's any room in this to implement some more sort of Nantucket um, we did Details. a yeah we did a couple um, in the fall things got busy with teachers and the turnout wasn't great um, but we had looked into doing more of that right I I'd love to hear through um, Dr Hallett your thoughts and other teachers thoughts on how we can improve certainly to our new teachers that joined us 
this year or last year just to see how can we what can we do as a school committee to make sure mm -hmm. that um, our new teachers are feeling welcomed and have the information that they need to know so thank you this mm -hmm. is this is terrific thank you very much all right thank you thank you thank you Kim Okay, hey, Mr. Lombardi, you are up for the athletic annual reports. Yes, yeah. Come on. It? <laughs> Good evening. What's that? Sorry. Sorry. I know. Geez, where's everybody going? No. <laughs> All good. Um, good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present to you all tonight. Um, as the athletic director for Nantucket Public Schools, I'd like to prov provide a general overview of our school's athletic achievements from this past year and also share some insights into the challenges that we faced. First and foremost, I am proud to announce that our athletic programs have experienced a significant amount of success this year. Our teams displayed incredible determination, teamwork and sportsmanship, both on and off the field. It is with great pride that I highlight the accomplishments of these athletes. Despite many transportation issues this past year and our normal weather conditions, our student athletes persevered and demonstrated their dedication to their respective sports. We faced some logistical challenges with scheduling due to these issues, but I am pleased to report that our teams managed to navigate through these obstacles without skipping a beat. We were very fortunate enough to have many of our teams qualify for the state tournament over all three seasons. However, a few of our teams definitely stood out during their tournament runs. Our girls volleyball team, boys hockey, boys lacrosse, girls lacrosse, and boys tennis teams all won at least two tournament games headed by our coaches. As we reflect on this past year, I think it is extremely important to recognize that our sense of Whaler pride is as strong as it's ever been. Our students, coaches, parents, and community members have come together to create an environment that clearly stands out amongst many other schools. This team effort has truly made a difference in the lives of our student athletes and will continue to build up our athletic programs to new heights. In addition to the support during the regular season games, it should be noted that the students and the community support during our home tournament games this year was something special. I will never forget the atmosphere in the high school gym during the girls volleyball round of, eight, round of 16 game versus Blackstone Valley, or at the rink during the boys hockey round of eight game versus Amesbury. It was absolutely amazing. I think a lot of you were probably there. It was crazy. None of these achievements would have been possible without the continued support of our school staff and administration. Their dedication and commitment to the success of our athletic programs has been crucial. From the early dismissals to the changes in schedules to receiving daily emails from me, they were all very supportive and we can't thank them enough. Moving forward, we will remain committed to addressing transportation issues as they come up, weather challenges, and scheduling conflicts. Matt and I will continue to adjust on the fly and find effective solutions in all obstacles that get in our way with the hopes of doing what is best for our school and our student athletes. Speaking of this guy, I need to express my sincere appreciation for Matt Hunt. I'm gonna like cry here, whoa. <laughs> All right, seriously, like, whoa. <laughs> he is an invaluable employee of this district and needs to be thanked for all that he does. The athletic department would not function if it wasn't for this guy here. He has not only ingrained himself into the school community, but into the community of Nantucket as well. He is a true asset to this island and to the Nantucket public schools. And we are very fortunate 
to have him. I really don't know where I would be if it wasn't for Matt. And I say it to Adrian every day. <laughs> I am thankful. I am thankful. <laughs> So I'm very thankful every day that I get to share an office with this kid. It's, it's great. <laughs> so in conclusion, I would like to thank everyone who has contributed to the success of our athletic programs. We all know that we live in a very special place that definitely has its unique challenges. But with the dedication of our coaches, the support of our school staff and administration, and the Whaler pride instilled in our student athletes, we have all made this year a year to remember. Together, we will continue to strive for excellence and continue to embrace the talents of our student athletes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. So, just real quick, um, I'm just going to go through a couple slides here just to highlight a few things um, that came about this past year. So, I know there's a lot of numbers up there, but as you can see, our participation numbers are increasing which is a great thing but on the flip side unfortunately there have been some cases this past year where the numbers are too high where we've had to make cuts and that's a, that's a new thing fairly new um, it's something that we're dealing with and it's eye-opening for some kids and parents um, but we are doing the best we can to accommodate everybody but there are cases where we need to have tryouts. Um, and that's, I feel like that's a normal thing on the other side. Um, so it's something that we're dealing with and most people have been okay with it. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's been eye-opening for some. So the next three, three slides, I just have a few season highlights for fall, winter, and spring. Um, as you can see, a lot of our teams have qualified for the state tournament. Um, our volleyball team advanced into the Elite Eight. thought this was kind of cool. Cole Chambers, first hole-in-one in school history this past fall. And you can see the amount of All-Stars that we had during the fall season. Same for winter. Um, again, pretty much every team qualified for state tournament. Boys hockey, like I mentioned, made it all the way to the Final Four. Uh, Wells Ferreira got his 400th win this past winter, which was pretty exciting. Um, seven swimmers represented at the um, at the state swim meet, which was kind of cool. And also the all-star list there again. And for the spring, um, we just found out the other day that um, Bailey Lower, our star girls lacrosse player, was just named a USA Lacrosse All-American. So that's pretty exciting for her, her family, and, yeah. and for our district here. We had a few significant donations uh, this past year. I mean, the one on the bottom was from Sankey Head Golf Club, but that was at the end of last year. But um, that we, I felt we should add that as well to this. Um, a gentleman had reached out to me months ago, and he wishes to remain anonymous, um, and reached out to me directly and said, hey, I want to donate new football helmets to your entire program all three levels. So I worked with this man for the last couple months and the first shipment of helmets showed up today. So he donated just under $40,000 uh, for uh, new helmets, which is pretty exciting. And then the 11400 from the Nantucket Yacht Club, um, I think that's the second year that they've done that for our, our tennis program. That was last year. Um, real quickly, just a few other things to add. Um, we added two new programs this past year, freshman boys basketball. Again, we had to make cuts there because there were so many kids that wanted to play basketball. Um, and then club indoor track and field um, with Mr. Mimic up there. And we're actually going to go to varsity next year. So Chris did a great job with that. So thank you, Chris. There. We had six first year head coaches. Um, so that was a lot of um, communication with these guys. Um, I see one up in the back corner, Grace Antonovich with softball, did a great job. Jack Moran, boys hockey, Sophie Davies swimming and diving, Doug Lebrecht, girls soccer, Tim Serdos with football, and Bruce Turner um, with sailing. So they all did a great job. It was 
definitely uh, tricky at times, but we, we made it work. Um, like I said before, Willis got his 400th this past winter. Our volleyball coach, Andrew Vaselli was inducted into the Massachusetts Volleyball Hall of Fame, which is very exciting. And then just a few player accomplishments. You can see Vicky Todorova, Trace Brannigan, Carson Wellington, Bailey Lower all received some pretty significant um, accolades. So we are pretty happy for them too. And lastly, this slide here, just some things that I thought you should all be aware of. Um, we had Mr. Gervin's Woodshop class build a few scores booths for our field hockey and soccer fields. Um, we were fortunate enough to play a few baseball games and have a few tennis matches on the new courts and field over on Bacchus Lane, which was pretty exciting. Um, Deb Gately was great. She did it last year and this year. Conducted civil rights and Title IX training for all coaches at the beginning of each season, which we greatly appreciated. Um, and then I, we just started probably a month or so ago, um, Coaches Supporting Coaches Roundtable. Just an opportunity for all the coaches to get together um, and just share ideas, bounce ideas off of one another. Um, so we're hoping to continue that. We've had one meeting. We're hoping to have another one um, here very soon. And then Mr. Hunt completed the requirements to become a registered athletic administrator. That's the certification that I got last year. He got this year, so he's trying to keep up with me, I guess. <laughs> um, so, and then lastly, I won't read through this, but it's just a thank you. There's so many people to thank um, in order to make this department run. Um, it's definitely a lot. Um, there are long, busy days, but between Matt and I, we feel like we do a pretty good job, and um, we're pretty happy with where we're headed, and we're looking forward to a little time off this summer. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> um, Esmeralda. Um, no questions, just thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm just curious where that hole in one, what course that was. That was my comment. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's exciting. No, thank you so much, both of you. It's, it's, um, I, I love the, the pride and, and all that you do, and it's really meaningful for our students. Appreciate so thank, thank you. you. Tim. What are you going to do with the kids that get cut? Because you don't know that the kid you cut isn't going to go through a growth spurt and end up at six five and well, it's tricky. playing I mean, canaster it, instead of basketball. So we had we had a situation <laughs> this spring with our middle school baseball, um, and thankful for Mr. Horton over here, um, who was involved with Nantucket Little League. So I, I forget how many kids we had to cut. From do you remember how many? Eleven was it? Eleven. So we had to, eleven kids didn't make the CPS baseball team. So we did get a lot of pushback and emails and phone calls and everything like, what about my kid, blah, blah, blah. So we were in communication with Mr. Horton and the middle school admin, and we came up with the, or he came up with the idea, hey, maybe we can have them play joint forces with Little League. And they were able to do that, and they had a, a fun spring, I'm assuming. Yeah, still playing, still playing right now. Because I think that's so important that – you just don't know where those kids are going to be when they get to the high school. Right. And then, then I mean, they'll have the opportunity to try out again. But, I mean, I hate to come across as harsh, but, like, sometimes it might just not work out, unfortunately. I mean, we're going to try to explore different opportunities for these kids to play. But there might be times where, unfortunately, they won't be. How many kids are out for football? Do you know? That starts at the end of August. No. We're going to have probably, I would guess, 60, 70 kids, 9 through 12. And then probably another 20, 30 in the middle school. Okay. I see the kids out doing 40-yard dashes out in the field today. I don't see them out there. I did. <laughs> <laughs> they can do that stuff on their own. Well, they were timing each other. <laughs> see who's got the fastest 40 at. I think it was a pretty successful year, um, and congrats to both of you. Thank you. Because uh, 
it doesn't work without both you guys Appreciate doing it. whatever you need to do. Doing whatever we need to do is right. <laughs> so would this be a good time to talk about the summer sports program we'd like to start? <laughs> yeah, Just right. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, thank you, both of you. I, I only know a little tiny bit of everything that you guys do from handling your students, your coaches, your parents, mm -hmm. and working endless, endless hours um, and fighting against our weather. But I, I get, to, um, get to go to some of the games, which I love, and, and seeing you at the ice rink um, when we were in the final, I was like, oh my God, you were just managing that yeah. crowd <laughs> like a pro. Yeah. Um, and I got to bring my football rattle, which right. made me happy. <laughs> Um, on a serious note, do, do you train your coaches on QPR, which is the, um, I think it's question, persuade, and respond. It's, it's a piece that's available for lay folks, if you will, mm -hmm. to be trained working with uh, students and adults who we might be concerned of their mental health. I have, that's the first I've heard of it, so no, okay. we don't, but I'm happy to look into it. So for I sure. wonder if I can yep. through Dr. Hallett. Definitely. Um, it's, a, it's not a very long training, but I just think that um, for our students who are spending a lot of time mm -hmm. with their coaches and in stressful situations, you, you, get, you get to know your yep. kids. And no, I just I'm think happy to explore that, yeah, talk with Dr. Oh, Hallett. Right. Absolutely. Great. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate lucky it. to have you both. If thank I you. before you leave, if I may through the chat. Yes, of course. Um, I just wanted to thank you both because I know some of the struggles that you've had today with busing, with um, you know, a, a variety of things, but um, it's it's been a, a great year and I love seeing so much participation and the, so much of that is attributed to both of you. Um, I have to say that my highlight of the year was being smashed up against the glass. Oh during the hockey final I with put that all of the right students. There. Yeah. <laughs> Someone took a picture of myself, Mrs. Vassell, and Mrs. Sarah Dellis smashed up against the glass with all the kids behind me. It was the most fun I've had in an event in a long time. So thank you very much. Thank that you. was great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask Jennifer Erickson to come join us. Oh, there you are already. <laughs> Lickety split. So following these guys is tough, um, <laughs> number one. Fair. Number two, um, as you know, over the years, I've tried to keep it pretty simple because I tend to fall into being a geek, and I'm trying not to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm Jen Erickson, Director of Technology. Um, this was the end of my fifth year here. Um, my tech team consists of uh, Joanne Johnson, my database administrator. She's a 12-month employee. David Evans has been here a year and a half. He is also um, a 12-month employee. Jason Campisi is a 10-month employee. Uh, Marina Bencheva is 10 months. Jaime Saravia is 10 months. And Morgan Smith-Jones is our new tech integrationist. She is a 12-month employee. Um, it was really hard for me to do the accomplishments. I've never had a year like this before where normally um, we've had a, a line of all of these things that we're going to get done. So um, last summer we got the time off workflow set up in Aspen so that um, most of the school employees could use a more automated process instead of using the time slips. Um, so that was in there. Um, we did do some upgrades to some of the equipment in the auditorium. Specifically, we got a new mixer board. Um, we've gotten some um, equipment to lock that stuff up. We're still struggling with trying to figure out how to replace the speakers, which most of them are blown. Um, huge thank you and shout out to Brian Potter for loaning us the speakers that we've been using for, mm -hmm. I guess, about the last um, six months. So he is always an amazing resource, and thank you to him. Um, we finally were able to get a whole bunch of updates done to our wireless controller. Our wireless has been just crazy trying to figure out exactly what was going wrong. Um, and I'll get to some of, you know, not much good happened with the ransomware, but one of the things was that we able to just 
shut some stuff down for a time period to be able to get a lot of the updates done that had just been pending, which are so hard to get done when you've got 2,000 people who are like, let me on, let me on. Um, we were also able to uh, install a few more interactive panels. The oldest panels at this point, I think I only have one left that was purchased in 2014. The rest are 2015 and 16, which hopefully will get replaced this summer. And then ransomware hit. So on January 31st at 2 o'clock in the morning, the threat actors let it rip. And the, it had been sitting in our network for long enough that it had infected a bunch of things and just sat there and waited. And at 2 o'clock in the morning, they pushed the button and it just spread across pretty much everything that had windows on it. And we were doomed. I mean, at that point, Joanne called me. Um, I was actually trying to get my car inspected, which made things even more complicated. But Joanne called me and said, we're infected. You know, we've been hit with ransomware. And then we had to come back while Joanne is assessing every, all the damage that's being done. I am going down my list on my cell phone by a window so that I had signal and just going down a list of all the people that by law I have to contact. So the police department, town administration, town IT, the FBI, um, the state um, MSI SAC. So all of these security people, state police, every single one of them has a similar set of question. It took hours, hours, just standing there answering those questions. So we knew this. Um, we had been through it, or the school had been through it before, before I started, right before I started uh, five, six years ago. So we had the list in place, Kara McGonigal, who has since retired as Chief Technology Officer. She was right there, anything you need. Brian Turbot, who's the finance director for the town, just do what you need to do, Jen. And then, you know, we started getting things set up. So again, I was sucked into dealing with all the legalities, the insurance <coughs> company, how are we gonna pay for all this stuff, that kind of thing. And Joanne Johnson, who I talk about having tears. This woman put in week after week, like 90 hour weeks of working in the hallway outside the server room, just trying to get things up and running, trying to work with the programmers at Progent, who were just trying to you know, find out what we had, get things up and working, get our network working again, getting our phones working, all of these things. It was just day after day, ended up being week after week. And I can't, Joanne, I'm so glad you're here. I can't thank you enough for all the hard work you put in during the ransomware. So, um, some of the things that we were responded with is we were in the process. We had gotten a quote for the replacement of our firewall just because we were ha still having issues with the wireless. So that became a, uh, okay guys, I need this <coughs> firewall like tomorrow. We couldn't take any more chances with our old firewall because it was one of the things that seems to have failed as far as letting the threat actors in. We um, made the time to do all the firmware and Windows upgrades on all of the new equipment that we had to reprogram. Um, we had to, you know, keep in mind we had to take all the um, the all the internal machines that were on our internal network and we made the decision pretty much right away, just format them and reinstall, we're starting fresh. We are not waiting around to figure out what's gonna end up happening. We need to get everybody back up and running as soon as possible. Um, we were able to segment the network. So segmenting the network means to separate the schools from each other so that if someone plugs in something down at NIS, maybe NIS would go down, but the whole rest of the school system would go down. Um, we're still in the process of perfecting that. We need to, one of the things we need to do is get our phones 
the whole phone system pretty much kind of on its own network so that if anything goes down with the wireless or um, the regular network for the administrative staff, that kind of things, the phones stay up. Um, we are in the process of implementing dual authentication. Um, most of the administrative staff um, and ESPs are already using the dual authentication. We're using um, my, I use the software token, so it's on my phone. Um, and some people use the hardware token, which is a little dongle that there's a number changing on the token mm -hmm. every minute. So we are in the process of getting rolling that out with all of the teacher laptops. Um, the teachers that want to keep their devices over the summer, they're getting it now. All the rest of the teachers will get it when they return in August. And then um, the cybersecurity training, we are aligning with the town. We're going to be rolling out a program called Know Before, um, which is a very user-friendly way of, I, I can't think of the delicate words to use, but um, sending out things that, you know, we call them traps, kind of. It's like, okay, did you open an email and click on a link that you shouldn't have? And instead of getting this burnt, burnt, or some big stop sign or something, it really is more of an educational program. And the one that I loved that I've seen over and over again, it pops up and it says, oops, it's a big orange screen with oops on it. So it's really meant to be more of, you know, let's steer people towards the education they need. Um, and that's going to be part of the, um, when people come back in August, they're going to be using the Know Before program to start getting used to, you know, how, how we train on the, that kind of cybersecurity stuff. Um, the, um, our line-wise, um, which was web filtering and the, what we use to monitor the students, I just wanted to show this particular screen. Usually I show one with more of the, um, you know, the graphs and that kind of thing. But if you look at just the amount of things that got blocked, both that we initiated from the inside um, and that or links that were part of stuff, we're talking close to 1.5 million queries that were blocked by our web filter. Um, then I get into the accomplishments. And what I thought I'd do since we had a hard stop when the ransomware hit is instead of talking about things that we accomplished within each school, I thought I'd talk about what a day in the life of a tech looks like. So with each school, um, I put NES and NIS together. We've done really, really well. Um, Marina and David have done really, really well in cross-training and covering both schools together. So the teachers in both schools um, understand that if they put in a ticket saying I need help it could be Marina responding it could be David depending on which one has the time to be able to um, deal with that the next person we're still getting a lot of people calling us on the radio and on the phone the only reason that's kind of problematic is there's no way to figure out which things are more important than other things um, we also, um, the ticketing system is tracking how many things are going wrong. So if I see, I'm monitoring it all day long, if I see four or five things coming in saying, I have an issue with this, it's like, well, it's not the teacher, it's Aspen, or it's one of the tools they're trying to use. Um, so what Marina and David do um, in a day, first thing they come in, they're all here by 7.30, and the first thing they do pretty much until 8.15 or 8.30 is um, accommodate the teachers and assist them with things that are not working first thing in the morning. Once that's done, uh, Marina is our telephony guru. She's programming phones, upgrading equipment, um, that kind of thing. Um, and then a lot of device upgrades and repairs. All day long, things are coming in and going out. We, they repair as much as they can themselves. And then David has become a real great hardware resource um, as far as 
what did he do? It was really creative. He was taking the wireless, there's a little tiny chip that does the wireless on a Chromebook and plugging it in to some of the desktops because our desktops didn't have wireless on them, but they needed to after the ransomware hit and we needed to get those people on. He figured out that he can do that by, you know, swapping the equipment out. Um, network and wireless support is, um, they spend a lot of time doing that. And then troubleshooting the printer issues. We've been in the process of trying to get the paper cut system up, upgraded and all of the copiers on the same version. It's, it's hard. You know, you're, the server needs to be rebooted. That would blow away all the print jobs. Um, the, if something isn't working, is it because of the way it was sent? Was it a print job sent the wrong way? And, you know, they have to go and work with the person and figure that out and then try to track it down. So at CPS and NHS, um, Jason Campuzzi is the tech primarily at CPS and he also assists the community school, both at the elementary school and at 56 Center. His, um, his role is pretty much um, first thing, he does the same teacher support. He does have a, f a little bit more of student support first thing in the morning, um, but we're trying to get the students used to um, leaving a device that's not working in the front office. Every classroom this year had five older devices, so if a student <coughs> didn't bring their device charged, if something broke, if they forgot their Chromebook at home, they would be able to borrow one in this class, return it. We highly recommend it, and I'm not sure how much it ended up happening that the teacher grabbed the cell phone from the child before they borrow a computer, because it really helps make sure that they get the computer back. I don't know how, whether that was pretty much just the be at the beginning, but um, so that's been working pretty well. Um, and then the rest of the day, he's pretty much upgrading devices and doing repairs. He um, helps and he was helping with the auditorium um, when there's programs going on in the auditorium. Um, at the high school, Jaime Saravia is um, the, again the same thing. First thing in the morning, he is teachers and students a line out the door. And then I wanted to put the EL support because he has become an amazing, calming presence, especially for our EL students. They have a place to go if they speak Spanish um, and just get a little bit of support. And his personality is such that he can just very, you know, easily get people calmed down, get them back to school, that kind of thing. He also um, pretty much runs the Nantekis program along with myself. I'm not there every single time they meet, but he teaches them how to repair the Chromebooks. Um, interestingly enough, my student interns, I hire out of that program for students to work in the summer, and we may have as many as six this summer that will be paid That's to great. fix Chromebooks. We'll be down at NIS. Um, and then he does upgrades and repairs also. He is also kind of one of, uh, he's one of our designated reps to process um, teacher um, laptop repairs through Dell. It's kind of a complicated process to get things um, through Dell. So he's been working on that. Um, I've, in the past, I've shown you this slide of the devices purchased. And I thought what I'd do is just go directly to the graphic because it's a little, um, more straightforward. Um, you'll notice that between fiscal year 21 and 22, the amount of Chromebooks that were purchased dropped a lot. It was pretty high in 21 because we were able to use end of year funding <coughs> to buy the Chromebooks, I think, for the sixth grade. And then the ninth grade, we used the fiscal year 22 funds. Now in fiscal year 23, we're going back to the way we always did it and we're ordering 350 Chromebooks primarily for sixth grade and ninth grade. So they'll get new devices as they go into those schools. Um, administrative functions that we do, we're doing the line-wise, as you saw the screen, is classroom monitoring and web filtering. Um, Google is managing all the Chromebooks. Azure is managing all the laptops and Mosul manages the iPads. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think we're up to uh, about 350 iPads. It may be a little more than that. Um, 
We do the, we have an inventory management system that we're keeping track of who has what things. Um, and then of course Aspen, the center of our universe doing the student records, um, scheduling and assessments. And then this year our new administrative function is our tech integration, that's Morgan. Um, she spent the first six months um, doing half time in her new job and doing half time assisting with this special ed department in her previous position. She kind of helped with some of that stuff to keep them going while they were transitioning to finding new people. Um, one of her tasks is to um, when a set of instructions needs to go out to everybody, um, they take three forms. The first form is a one page cheat sheet and that's for the old timers like me. I just want to see it in writing, uh, maybe even a little check boxes and in the order that I have to hit these buttons, okay? That's old timers like me. Then the, um, then she'll do another one that will have screenshots in it for people that want to see, okay, I want to know what the screen's gonna look like when I'm there. And then the third thing she's doing with many of the processes is she's making a video. So we're hitting kind of the different age groups and their learning styles on how they were able to do things. And those, we have a new kind of library of resources called Tech Resources, which is on the Google Drive. Um, looking ahead to this summer and um, going into next year, um, we are continuing with the network and the wireless enhancement. I feel like we're getting close. Um, we did lose internet today and it ended up being one of our internet service providers. And of the times that the wireless has gone down in the last couple of weeks, we've had four times when it went down for a little bit, you know, more than 20 minutes. Twice it was from outside. It was not because of equipment, our equipment that went bad. Um, we're trying to ramp up our inventory life cycle, make sure we're getting rid of the old devices. On that previous graphic where I, I didn't show how many devices we have that are older, this summer I'm hoping is the time we really get all of the devices that we procured up to um, and through fiscal year 17 that we are, you know, get rid of those and recycle them. We do recycle um, with a professional company that comes and does, does proper recycling. Um, our get help system, um, I think a lot of people are really used to it now and putting in a ticket is really helpful in tracking things. Some things take a lot longer to fix than others, so that's helpful. Um, the things I put in italics are things that Morgan will be doing is training <coughs> tools for the teachers and students. Um, we hope to get senior devices. Um, Mrs. Vassell has asked for a couple of years if we could get Windows laptops. The students actually asked if we could get Windows laptops for the seniors. I know the juniors would like them too. It's just really hard. Laptops cost almost almost $1,000 each um, to get ones that are robust enough to last a couple of, well, for at least four years. So um, that's, you know, for our incoming class of seniors, we need to have at least 150. So we're talking $150,000 roughly to get laptops for the seniors. Um, we have a capital article that we get every three years for $350,000. Um, this year we'll be replacing the virtual server environment. So that's what um, Joanne is our virtual server wizard. We need a server, we spin one up, takes about 20 minutes instead of having to get a price quote, get something shipped to us, which can take a month. Um, the capital article may be paying for at least a portion of the senior devices. We hope to um, finish um, replacing the interactive panels that are older than seven years. And um, we're gonna be purchasing a lot more phones to swap out the ones that just, um, the, Interestingly enough, during the pandemic, everything was getting washed down so much that the phones got kind of sticky and they're not all working. So we need, we're gonna um, replace a lot of those. Um, any questions? Yeah. No questions, thank you, Jen. Tim? I just barely understand. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I really try not to speak. Esmeralda? Um, actually, I do have questions. Yes. Um, are seniors required to have their own personal 
laptop? No, we oh. we um there was a, a huge um problem not problem. It was a problem more from the equity standpoint okay. standpoint that some children's families can afford to get them a brand new MacBook Pro, which was actually a lot faster than the teacher devices. And then some families um, had an older Chromebook. So last year, we stopped allowing personal devices in the school. So everyone ha was on the same kind of device. So they were using the, the Chromebooks, their touch screens. They're actually pretty nice devices. but both from a business perspective for our, our children that are graduating out, going into business, their businesses are still using Windows machines and they had no exposure. They don't understand the operating system and how much more complicated it can be. They weren't learning about the Microsoft Office mm -hmm. tools that we all use, so it's important. I mean, I love the idea that we're gonna be doing this. I think it would be great for the seniors. We also, um, we had put previously, um, we had a bunch, maybe almost 20 devices that Jed Williams was using for the uh, one of the computer science classes because those machines can do so much more as far as website development, that kind of thing. Um, another question. The Know Before program, that's something new. Yes. For, okay. Um, just for personal experience, it's not as bad as people may think it is. Right. It's actually fun to do those programs. Yeah. Um, and then out of curiosity, who's the internet provider? We actually are using both Comcast. Um, we have Comcast for the internet. Mm -hmm. We also have Crown Castle mm -hmm. that is a redundant internet <clears throat> so that if one were to go down, the other one, it will fail over to the other one. And then further, we have Comcast PRI are our phones. So the phone service that's coming in is also on Comcast. I think that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't have any questions, but thank you to you and your team because I know this has not been an easy year. And just from my short time of working downstairs in the basement for the community school and having a copier in the old, um, I forget what the room was called at the time, um, you know, people need copies, our teachers need copies, our TAs need copies right at that moment. And even without any situations, it caused a lot of um, worries and concerns. And I know that you worked diligently, you and your team, to try to bring us up um, quickly and efficiently. So thank you. Thank you for keeping your patience and thank you for coming into work every day because we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. All right. Thanks, Jen. <clears throat> Moving on to committee discussions and votes to be taken. We have an opportunity to vote in. Katie Bedell, if I could please have a motion to approve the appointment of our school committee clerk, Katie Bedell. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 May I have a motion to approve the donation to Nantucket Community School pool in, uh, pool in the amount of $250 from the Jean F. and David G. Nathan Fund. Move approval. Second. All Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 Move approval, please, for donation to Nantucket Community School Summer Boost Program in the amount of $3,000 from the Sconset Union Chapel. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Vote to approve the donation to Nantucket Community School in support of a master's swim class with Bo Garufi in the amount of $1,000 from the Nantucket Triathlon Club. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, please move for approval for the May 10th um, executive session meeting minutes. Move approval. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, aye. Um, move approval, please, for the May 16th workshop meeting minutes. Move so approval. moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Vote to approve the June 6, 2023 meeting minutes. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, moved, uh, motion to approve June 7th workshop meeting minutes, please. So moved. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. 
Transfers and invoices may have a... So um, moved. So moved and may have a second. Second. All in favour? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Get a little tongue twisted around that. <laughs> okay, subcommittee workshop <coughs> groups. Anybody been meeting to do anything on... How's your time with the cl collaborative? Uh, so I was with the... Um, virtually with the collaborative mm -hmm. last Wednesday and as um, Dr. Hallett mentioned we have two new bus drivers which drew a round of applause from <laughs> the entire collective uh, so that was um, meaningful but yeah so nothing more to report really um, other than that was kind of the big news out of that meeting. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. And did I did you say that somebody else is in training? Yes, we have a third in training. So fingers crossed, mm. we are really getting um, community support with this, and so this is great. We, these are folks who live on the island and have children in the system. So That's we are fabulous. thrilled to have. Mm -hmm. That's admitted. fabulous. So knock on wood. Mm -hmm. um, if I may, through the chair, mm -hmm. um, I would like to convene the policy subcommittee in July, and we have a couple of dates. If we can find a few dates, we can get some work done because we have put, kind of put things on the back burner for yes. the moment. So um, that would be um, Laura and I believe our new school committee yes, member. Yes, shut down. So. Mm -hmm. um, we received an email to um, we're going to be meeting for the school lunch program. Did you see that? I did. Email? I do not know if I can make those dates work. Okay, but. Um, Okay. If not, I think I can. I so okay, terrific. Okay, so hopefully on our July eighteenth meeting, one of the meetings, mm -hmm. I can give mm -hmm. some. Just I'll be in rehearsal, that. so I won't be able to be there. Okay. Um, agenda for next meeting, July eighteenth. Um, we will look at our enrollment. Um, we will um, do projected for the remain for the for the coming year. Um, Hiring update, of course. Professional teacher status. I'll share with you the teachers that will be moving to PTS status. Um, and then we hope to have a um, multi-tier system of support needs assessment presentation around the needs assessment that we um, that we conducted with Katie Novak, mm -hmm. um, the leadership team, and the. Um, we want to make sure that there is um, that, that it's uh, shared with you and the public um, as to what we discovered and how that's going to drive our strategic. Uh, planning and our district improvement planning over the summer. So we hope to do that for you in, ju in July. Okay, great. Any other comments or updates the committee would like to make? No? Um, well, then hearing that, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you.